pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll call the meeting to order. Roll call. Mary Westergaard. Yes. Van Camp. Yes. Muller. Yes. Frank. Yes. Beckman. Yes. Walton. Yes. Can we just want to talk during public forum? Yeah, I, whatever works for you. Oh, this will work. All right. Um, so I'm here on, I guess, kind of behalf of the museum, kind of just behalf of the people that are interested in, in getting the log cabin um, secured for another, hopefully, 20, 30, 40 years of, of life. Um, if you've had a chance to go up and look at the back side, which would be kind of the south side of the road, it's starting to become pretty deteriorated. Um, shingles are starting to miss, it's starting to rot, and, and there's some concern that if we don't address this, probably quicker than we have, um, we're going to lose that log cabin, which is you know kind of a pretty big part of the museum. Um, the museum committee the last few years has put a lot of time and effort into trying to get the museum updated and cleaned up. Obviously, the mayor has been well involved with the activities in the base of the train set there, and, and we've, we've really increased the amount of uh, the amount of foot traffic that the museum has seen and, and making sure that the log cabin sticks around, I think, is a big part of that. Um, I guess our belief is the city owns it. We're asking, you know, how do we, how do we get that roof repaired? Um, I believe Teresa has the numbers as far as what Chris has put together from a materials estimate, from a, from a labor estimate. Um, I don't want to give those numbers and be wrong, so Teresa, you have those. Yeah. Materials was fifty two eighty nine, um, and then potential of needing to add a couple of different items, so another additional possible thirteen hundred dollars. Um, and then Bryce Husted has said that he would do the labor on it for twenty five hundred. Um, I did get a commitment from the community club to put a thousand dollars towards the project. Museum from a from a financial standpoint doesn't have a lot of money to put projects like this. We've been spending our money inside just trying to update um, update our uh, displays that we have in there. But to tackle this project would basically wipe out our entire balance. So um, really hoping that the city is able to, to put some money towards this. And you know anything that anything that would be kind of left from a balance standpoint, we'd have to try to figure out a fundraise for or or. Um, address it if we need to get involved in, in kind of covering that as well. So um, my ask really is, is that the city goes ahead and, and covers the cost of repairs on the roof um, so that we can keep the walk cabin going. I'll take questions if you guys have anything. What, what is the time frame on repairing the uh, We probably should have had it done this summer. Um, <laughs> like all things, time slipping away from us. So I mean, if we have to kind of tie it together and, and for the winter time, that may be an option. Just if we can't get it done. Otherwise, I'd say ASAP is what we're looking at. Does the cap in the capital funds the log cabin has a thousand bucks or nine hundred bucks? Yeah, it doesn't have. I mean, there's not anything there. I mean, no. we might be able to pull from like local, local option sales tax or something like that for, to, to to get the to get it paid for. I mean, it would have been something that we might have been able to ask a grant for, you know, from like the Sac County, you know, foundation or something, but I guess it wasn't thought of or realized in time. So, so we're looking at about seventy-five hundred, seventy-seven hundred dollars. We're looking like yeah. eight thousand eighty-nine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um. <clears throat> I mean, it's some of the materials, I mean, I think when I talked to Chris, he came in in my office, he said, you know, you may need some of these, you may not. He, I think he kind of, you know, upped the estimate on what might be needed, so you might be able to get in something lower than that. But. Do we have <clears throat> funds in our hotel motel tax, or is that all spent? Yeah, I mean, yeah, those are two different places, local option sales tax or hotel motel, you could probably try and pull some dollars from. And we, do you know how much we do for your budget each year? 
I don't know off the top of my head. I, I, I can definitely find that out. Not that it matters, I just was asking. I'll make a motion we we so that you're in public forum. We're in public yeah. forum. We can yeah. do what we want. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's go out of public, public forum. Yeah. Are you done? I am in Los Angeles. You guys have any questions for me? Okay. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Now that we're out of public forum, we can have a motion to uh, mm -hmm. go ahead with this project and pull money out of the. Uh, you can't uh, do that. It's not out of the agenda. Okay. Yeah, it is. Just write it down. It's number nine on the list. Oh, well, you, can, you, can, you, you, can, you technically can do it. It's not hurting anything. Right, because you're out of public forum. So, yeah. it's okay. so wait, let's go, through the, let's go through the consent agenda. Okay. And then they talked about moving nine up in front of five. Right? Okay. The motion will approve consent agenda. Okay, however you want to do it. Okay. I'll, I'll make the motion. motion. Second. Roll call. Okay. Can we move nine right. up or? Yes. Yeah, that would be right after this. Yeah, let's go through the consent agenda, agenda. first. And then. Okay. Beckman? Yes. Walma? Yes. Beckett? Yes. Muller? Yes. Okay, Dave, now you can do it. I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> I make a motion that we uh, go ahead with the project for the roof of the I'll second it. Kevin. And can I have one question? So, yep. it, Teresa, if we do this, it's, it, can we look for grants in the future? Can we borrow the historical? Depends on what kind of grant. Depends on what kind of grant you you look at and when they do the project. If you get the if you get it tidied up and we get it done this fall and the project's already complete, it's hard to do it after the fact. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. But um, we can look and see what's available. Right. Because we've been talking about this for a couple of years to fix the roof. Couldn't find right. anybody. Right. Yeah. I, I thought we had to get the budget. I do too. Okay. Walma. Yes. Muller? Yes. <laughs> right? Yes. Beckman? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Right. Thanks, Thank you, guys. I'll be in contact, too. Okay, we have a building permit for pineapple flips. I'll make that motion to approve. Second? Second. Roll call. Frank? Yes. Beckman? Yes. Walman? Yes. Second? Yes. Muller? Yes. We want to wait for 10 point till Terry gets here. Probably sure. His email says that he won't be here till 6 15 because he's at a council meeting in Vail at 5. And he's not going to get here. Well, we'll put it to the last. We can always talk about it. Right. Yeah. Okay, we're going to talk about the trencher and the cost of repairs. I looked, uh, I looked at that. that thing. Sorry to speak up, but a little bit familiar with the trencher and with trenchers anyway. And all that stuff that needs to be replaced is wear items. And I'm assuming that whoever inspected it knows what they're looking at. Um, they don't change these rockets, they don't last forever. But if that's something we can get repaired so the guys can use that again, it would be my opinion. I don't know if it comes out of the electrical or out of the water. It would come out of electrical because the water is not going to probably use it. Right. If I, read, if I read this correctly, some repairs have already been made. Is that correct? We've done the 1,000-hour service because it hadn't ran in seven years, which was the $3,500. Seven years is not accurate. I'm just going by what I was told. Well, I know it was used for electrical at 175 Crescent Park Drive, 172 Crescent Park Drive, and 158 Crescent Park Drive, and also at 158 Crescent Park Drive. So, and them houses haven't been there for seven years. So, I, that's what I was told was seven years. It, that was probably the last time they've been. It has been used. The thousand hour service was thirty five hundred dollars. The repair to do the the repairs on it that's needed now is forty seven. Right. 21. Um, do they come here and do that or do you have to take it there? They, they have it already. Oh, okay. Um, the, the gentleman that picked it up, he did say, he goes, you know, he didn't know what the repairs were going to cost, obviously. He goes, honestly, if you sell the thing, you're going to get ten to 20000 You guys need to figure out what's going to be the best for you. I don't know what a new trencher costs. I cannot tell you that number. I have not looked into that. But... I'm just saying we're into it for 8000 pretty much roundabout, 
8,000 and it's entirely up to you guys on what you want us to do, whether it's to fix it or look at something else. Um, I don't a have new, a preference a, either way. A new trencher is going to be closer to 75 or 80. Yeah, I haven't looked, uh, so I can't give you that one at all. A used trencher with two to 3,000 hours on it goes anywhere from 12 to 22, depending on the condition and stuff like that. Um, just got done buying and selling one in the last 12 months. Do you know how many hours are on this? I do not. Well, I guess the question is, are the guys going to use it? Or are they going to want to hire everything done? I will tell you, if the situation is, to use it is there, we will use it. If the situation is better to have it board because of whatever situation is at hand, um, and boring's the best, safer option. We'll probably ask for the boring aspect of it. Um, I can't sit here and tell you, yes, they're going to use it 100% every single time, but if the situation is available for it, yeah, we're going to use it. But then, if we're going to use it, then we need to repair it. Well, even if we don't and we make the repairs, if we end up selling the thing, it's going to be worth more than. Well, I go back to several years ago, the city bought a boring machine. Right. Mm -hmm. And it didn't get used. No, it only had, what, 60 hours? 60 hours. It didn't have very many kids. So yeah. we sold it because it didn't get used. So. Yeah, and I think, I think part of the reason is the, the staffing needs, if I understand correctly, the staffing needs for a boring machine is that you have to have, you know, more staff than what we have now to properly use a boring machine because I've asked that question um, you know the trencher I think we can maybe utilize a little bit I think in town is going to be a little bit of a challenge just because of what the like down on Lakeshore Drive I mean the, the the experience that we had with you know things being in places we don't you know even if you locate everything I think you're going to have a little bit of a challenge in, in some spots but I think we want I personally think we want the trencher in working condition so it's available mm -hmm. for the guys to use. That's my opinion. I'll make the motion that we do the repairs and get it in optimal condition. And I also want to add in there if the guys need some training on it, that we work with them here to get them some training so they know how to run it and maintain it. And I made that suggestion too. Great. I'll second that one. We'll call. Okay, Beckman. Yes. Sankan. Yes. Muller. Yes. Frank. Yes. Walton. Yes. Let me talk about that storm drain. Seventy Main Street. I was asked to have it put on the agenda. Um, my understanding is this was at the the location where um, a driveway was driveway and a garage have been now placed over the where the storm drain is. Um, and we had, I remember when I first got here we had asked them to make sure to bring that the storm drain up to grade on the concrete but um, I think there was a discussion on potential of rerouting the storm drain but I don't know that it went very far after that. <clears throat> I was in on a lot of the discussion with Peterson um, back then and his recommendation was to reroute it back over to the property. I, I, and I got involved with this because this is my wife's nephew. Um, and then when um, John Gibson came on to replace Peterson, he talked about a slip line, um, you know, instead of removing it. But according to Jason, the cost of slip lining is outrageous for that monolineal footage. So based off of what the quotes are for Mr. Whitey's storm drain that goes right next to his house, we have approximately another 75 feet compared to what's there to do Mr. Whitey's is, the two quotes is 34,000 and the other one is 39,000. So we had another 50 feet on it. We're looking at, we'll just say 45. I, that's probably a good rough estimate 
but before that happens we also have to have it clean because there is cement in there from the side of it that has been collapsed when we did camera it and we couldn't go any farther than that based off of we didn't want to get the camera stuck in paper their camera when did we camera it the exact date i can't give you it was towards the end of july was the garage and the foundation and the driveway was already poured okay. black squirrel camera it right no he well, his he, camera he, built, camera he cameraed about five foot in because that's all his camera can do with that size of pipe we had cit do it when they were here okay. uh doing some of their other stuff and we had him camera mr whitey's that day also I, I guess the Wilsons are just, you know, they don't care, but there was, I, I researched it and there was no city easement going through the property. And had there been an easement, these people would never bought the property because they couldn't do what they wanted. I mean, they, put, they, they dug a basement and then built a garage to the side of the house and it basically was right over this storm sewer. Yeah, and I talked to Dave a little bit about it. Um, he mentioned a word called a predicative easement, whether it's actually one that had been filed or not. He said he would have to go back and look at the original plats to see what um, what the city makeup was at the time and what that area was. But um, is that where that house burned down? Yep. And did that house not have a basement? I can't remember. It did have a basement. It did. No. And this would have been there prior to that house burning down. What, the, the storm sewer? Right. Oh, it's been in there a long time. So, with that other company that cameraed it, does it, what what kind of shit you got as far as cement, you said? The half the wall came in on one side, just outside of the garage. Uh, or where the footing is towards 7th Street so it's on the other side okay. so I went and took pictures of the area so, so I didn't take a whole bunch of pictures but right on the other side over here is where that has it, collapsed and that's the direction it goes to correct so the and the rest of it according to the camera looked good it's cracked and okay. portions are starting to fail. The and the reason why I went and took pictures is um, if we take it over to the property line, they're the same ones. Oh. If we take it over to the property lines, we got electrical over there. We got transformers sitting there, um, and then there's a whole bunch of fiber there too. If we're going to go that direction, based off of where that's on the other side of the alley is another drain and that's where we have to come off of or we're going to have to rip up the driveway and <laughs> come yeah. off that way and I'd rather not rip up brand new concrete. Right. It would be on the north side of the alley and come across the alley and there's... That, that drains from the north to the south, correct? All right. And then once it goes past the south of the alley south of the alley that's when it goes underneath that driveway and garage correct mm -hmm. there was an intake there and they basically took that intake out put a man in the cover in there. It, yeah it's still an intake right um and there's one right across the street that ties across the alley that ties into it on the north side of the alley yeah, yeah. so so but i don't know this and the wilson's aren't here they're they're not worried about it The portion that scares me is if we abandon it and it falls apart completely 100%, that's a, probably a 16 inch void underneath. He probably has footings and probably some rebar, but what happens 20 years, 30 years from now when we have a 16 inch void and something starts to break and we start to crack his concrete or something like that, is that going to come back onto the city? And I think that's where we would have to have a, some sort of written agreement that 
that they that they're responsible at that point. That's a city. Right. But if we reroute off of the other storm intake on the other side of the road and up to the north. Correct. So if this is Mr. Wilson's here, yep. the one right across the alley, we're gonna have to come up this way and down the property line. We're looking at about 231 feet. And I don't know. <clears throat> what is there an option to come down to where Mr. Where that manway is at Mr. Wilson's driveway now, and then go to the. It'd be going uphill because if you look at both ways, it slopes right towards okay. those two intakes. Yeah. That alley does. Okay, I did that's and I didn't look at it close enough. So. The bi I mean, the biggest thing is we would probably have to have an engineer take a look at it, and they may they may make a suggestion that it shouldn't be rerouted, you right. know, and, and that kind of thing, but. I can tell you right now, I mean, we don't have anything in the budget for, for right. anything like this. You know, if we base the quotes off of, like, at, sorry to keep going back to your house, Whitey. Um, <laughs> if we base it off of the one to do it by Mr. Whitey's house at 150 feet, and then uh, if we're just going to open dig it or trench it in, we got to have somebody that's going to lay it at the proper grade. We don't have the equipment for that. Correct. No. And we're looking at approximately 230 to 250 Feet. And that's just. It, does it go on the south end of that street then? To the south side of Wilson's? Okay. So we'd have to dig up the street too? No. You could we could probably come back and tie in uh, before we get to the road. And that's kind of when I drew it out on Google Earth and Beacon, that's how I did it, not tearing up the road. But it's putting a nice 45 sweep in there to make it go back. Well, and you don't know what you're going to run into. Yeah, and we don't know, you know what don't, that what section of pipe looks like because we couldn't get there. <laughs> these <clears throat> these companies that do this slip lining, and I know we're basing your numbers off of what we quoted, but if there's more than <clears throat> one project in town, does that reduce it by foot for mobilization stuff? The more we order, the more or the cheaper the price. I mean, it's going to lower if we did. Say Mr. Whitey's, and then we did an entire block. Wasn't there another one we were talking about when we were talking about here? I thought we was talking down on Seventh Street or something, or did we just patch that? Seventh or West Street, I mean. That storm drain. Well, I thought there was collapse. <coughs> we just fixed that intake. Fixed that. The intake yeah, was the collapsed. Yeah, but I thought there was. I thought we did a a camera down that way, and there was issues that. They're doing. They're coming to do point repair on from 30 acres down to where Red Can, and then there is a point repair going through, uh, a lot 20, up to the highway. Right, right. There is point repairs being done. That's not the slip lining aspect of it. That's just filling in grout and cutting out tree roots and stuff like that. Okay. The important thing is we just can't afford to do anything right now anyway. Well, it's getting to be the wrong time of year. Oh, so yeah. that means we're that. We'll never find an engineering contract. Well, I think, <clears throat> I think for discussion purposes now, we just need to continue on what Wilson's would like to have done. They're not here. Um, and see what our options are that we can or can't do. It's unfortunate that when they dug the footings, and I know you don't want to stop the project, but we didn't stop and say, right now, what are we going to do? I probably wouldn't have wanted the storm sewer underneath my garage, but <laughs> that's me. But we're at this point now, we got to figure out our move forward plan, if there is one. Yeah. Right, and I, I need to just, I, what I need to do is, I, you know, just for the city's sake, Talk to Dave a little bit more. We I, we had a short discussion about it today, and then um, see you know where we would go with with those kind of issues. I guess. See what our options are. Okay, we have to consider the annual financial report. Um. So I think I got it. I finally have this done to the point where I'm comfortable and have it balanced with everything that I could find on it. Um, so, I mean, basically your front page um, puts you at 
Um, beginning of fund balance was three million six hundred eighty thousand three hundred and seventy five dollars. Um, your ending fund balance for fiscal year 23 is two million five hundred fifty nine thousand four hundred and twenty two, and that pretty much pretty well matches up with what the bank balance was on um, July one or June thirtieth. Um, you guys. Bent down um, the fund balance by nine hundred ninety-two thousand eight hundred twenty-three dollars this last year. So, with all of the various expenses that we had, and we still need to do our <coughs> audit, correct? Yeah, they're supposed to be here. Um, I believe it's around Wednesday. Okay, so this so week we're working on it. Oh, cool. Okay with it? I'm as okay as I'm going to be with oh, it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but didn't, didn't we know? <coughs> didn't we know we were spending down some of this stuff with the evapco line? Some of that stuff in that correct? The street project. Yeah, when when we did the budget. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, when you did the budget last year, I mean, because I asked the question in my interview about right. spending down further this next your twenty your twenty four budget. I didn't realize that we had spent down this much money in the last year. So, I mean, do I have concerns? Yes, I have. I have some variable concerns about um, spending your your fund balance down that much when we have um, issues that continue at the water plant in different places where we've got to pull money that not isn't necessarily in the budget to make repairs and that kind of stuff but I mean at the end of the day I mean without you know and, th and there's a conversation about you know um, the Evapco line and where that goes and you know some notes that I found that Scott had left about um, you know potentially bonding for that and you know and, and we did do a resolution that we would um, potentially bond for that project so that we could pay you know Pay our expenses on you know on that project and not quite take the fund balance down as much as as we did but I mean that can be a topic of discussion so um, yeah I'm am I uncomfortable I, I'm, a, I'm a little uncomfortable um, but you know this is this is this is where it is right now so I mean this is that this is how fiscal year 23 ended so that's what you're you're working on 24 ends in June, right? Yes. Okay, we'll move on to the urban renewal report. I need to have a, a we, we need to be I'll make a motion to approve the annual financial report. And I'll second. Roll call. Frank? Yes. Muller? Yes. Second? Yes. Waltman? Yes. Beckman? Yes. And now the urban renewal report. Um, so this in front of you, I mean, the urban renewal report is the urban renewal report. It's just, it's something that the legislature requires us to do. Um, is that our other piece of paper, is that right? It was this little this one here. that I gave you at oh, the beginning of the meeting. Got it right here. Yep. Um, I think I've got all of the numbers in here. There might be a little bit of tweaking on it that I have to do before it gets submitted on December 1st, but pretty much I think... This is how, um, again, you, you know, we spent out of this fund this year on a few various projects. So um, this is kind of where, where it stands right now. The big one we spent out of the urban renewal is that Evapco line, correct? Mm -hmm. and can somebody refresh me what the SAC beach infrastructure is? Is that the, this thing? Beach has got to be the motel mall or not. I honestly don't know. <laughs> I think that's what it did. We paid it off. Okay. So, I mean, it's it's a bond. It, right. There was a bond on it or an internal loan. So, that the last, uh, there was a bond on it because we paid the last payment in June. Okay. So, that that is now complete. Mm -hmm. So, the <clears throat> three that we, <clears throat> the projects we got going is the Jacobson, and that's a, 
Wait. And that's been paid. Right. No, that was been paid. That was paid in June of 22. Okay. So technically, that's completed. I just can't. I can't take it off of this report. It just sits there. Okay. Then so the Patco water line and then the community center tip obligation money, correct? Right. Yes. Any more questions? Any motion on this one also? Yes. I'll make that motion. Sorry. We'll call. Dave, will you second? Yes. Say cap? Yes. Waltman? Yes. Beckman? Yes. Frank? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Gary, we'll put you at the bottom. we got two more things that we'll get back to you. Fine. Thank you. Okay, health insurance renewal. Um, I, don't, I didn't bring in my notes with me. That was in, that was in your, um, Here you go, in your memo. Um, so basically what we're looking at on the renewal for insurance is a close to a 20% increase. Um, I kind of gave you a break, breakdown of, of what that looked like for our premiums and what the employer cost was and what the employee cost was going to be for the year. Um, you're looking at just the premium alone. You're looking at about not quite $300,000. Um, the employer share is about 233000 and the employee share, um, depending on, you know, no changes, um, you're looking at about $67,000 on that. Um, you know, we're limited with what we can do with um, the union contract, um, but I do make the recommendation that we begin to start looking other options or avenues. Um, to try and find out where we might be able to, you know, possibly go into the, the, the pool that other cities participate in to see if we can maybe, you know, reduce our premiums down. Maybe we can get some, you know, obviously with the union contract, we, you know, provide a certain amount of coverage and what that policy would look like. Um, we can't write this policy again. If we were to cancel it, we can't ever go back to it because it's just, um, but I, I think we need to at least look at other options. That doesn't mean that we don't, you know, can't keep going this direction, but I mean, that's a pretty good chunk of change on our, you know, on our health insurance, but, you know. That's the second year in a row, the last year, 40 some percent as well. What yeah, are, I mean, you, if you look, I mean, a lot of your increases do, I mean, and, and, you know, due to your claims, you know, if you look at the page, you know, between the claims incurred last year and the claims incurred this year, I know what I know. You can't tell us who is or isn't on our health insurance, but do we have any retired employees still on? We have one. Some of those claims, though, the higher claims are employees who are no longer on our insurance. Um, it's just that. How do they? How do they? The get claims it? because they they are they're, they're no longer like here, but they're no longer here. Like, so you're not years ago. You know your cost of claims. In the next several years, could start coming down. Down. It's just the other direction. Mm -hmm. Right. It's just with the lesser claims for this right. year. Yeah. We got bumped into some real big claims two years ago. They're going to get their money back somehow. Mm -hmm. Right. I could probably say you aren't going to see your premiums go down, but it might at least become you know stable, less than stable percent. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, a big, that's a big so what you're thing. suggesting is so last year my cloud was 32 percent. I was thinking it was 32 percent when we went last year. We got, yeah. dinged, we got dinged hard last year. We did, and this yeah. time it was 19.96. So like Teresa said, almost 20 percent. I did look up for them um, some of the larger claims and some of the employees that had those larger claims, and several of those employees are no longer on the city's insurance. It's just that those claims happen to be in the year, you know, prior to. To what they're looking at together, their information. Right. I mean, not saying that something couldn't happen. Actually, you know, with a current employee, I'm just saying right. that. So what you're suggesting is looking at it next year when we get our renewal. Before you get your renewal, you because I mean, I think you you really don't have a time frame at this point to really 
look at what your options would be. Right. I mean, you need to start this process in June. I mean, really, to... Last year, we went through this for almost two months, yeah. dealing with health insurance. Yeah, we did. So... And the big hang-up is that we give this up, we give it up, and then... Yeah. And the other thing that, you know, that's our biggest selling point when we hire how good insurance we got. So, you know, I... It's kind of <coughs> balance it out to you know keep good employees to get good employees. Mm -hmm. We gotta have you know have something that we can entice them with. I guess is what I'm trying to say. So let's have Rose do it. Yes. Good afternoon. We have a choice. Okay. <laughs> 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 so you. Is that a motion? Yes. Second? I'll second. Roll call. Waldman? Yes. Second? Yes. Waller? Yes. Frank? Yes. Beckman? Yes. Okay, we have a holiday coming up. Um, I, and I guess the only reason why I, you know, we put this on the agenda is, I mean, the majority of the staff has, <coughs> you know, requested the Friday after off, um, I did a quick survey, um, or asked for a quick survey out um, amongst other cities, our size, larger, I mean, just about, and I think I maybe come back with one or two that don't have the day after Thanksgiving off as a holiday. Um, so, I guess in, in consideration of, of our employees and enticement and what we can offer them, this would be something that we can do, you know, um, and I guess if not, well, I mean... First thing, we can't do anything about it right now because we're in that contract with the union. Yep. Well, I like, suppose, yeah. That's got to be all negotiated. Okay. Mm -hmm. Second of all, I don't care if you know, if that, that want to do that. You know, we've got 20% in increase. You know, to, right. The other thing that if, if you want to make something that can happen, I'm going to plant this seed. Does everybody get their birthday off of it? Yes. So would they be willing to give up their birthday and move that in day exchange. in exchange for Friday? Yeah, and just, I mean, I think that's just a negotiation piece that right. we can that's come up with a, as but, far as consideration. Yep. But, but like I said, we won't be able to really discuss this at all. This will be something that will be negotiated. We, okay. we, can't jump, we can't change it until you go into it. Until we go into it. That's fine. Yeah, and I'm, I'm okay with that. Okay. Well, is, is, is that coming up this year? No, 2025. Next year. No. Next year. Um, and asking for, if people are asking for the using vacation day for um, the Friday after Thanksgiving, are we limiting the number that can take off? Are we still retaining one person out of each department on duty so that we're not paying um, you know, an emergency on call, call out. On you mean call a, out a call out? Um. Currently, we will have one from each department. The struggle bus with this one is um, Evan, who's new, doesn't have any time to use or anything like that. So he's going to be our electrical guy that day. And if we run into a scenario or whatever the situation happened to be, we're gonna to have to call one of the guys anyways. Um, Evan has started on call, which we would have to call somebody anyways because Evan's still so green. Right. Um, and then as far as the public work side, I'm gonna be here anyways. So I'm not gonna make Evan work by himself and well, less here. I just said one from each department, <coughs> you know, if something would come up that. Yeah, so it'll be myself. Yep. Um, but I meant even from here forward, we need correct. to keep somebody on yeah. on staff instead of being on, on call and calling them in and, and paying them again. I, I don't disagree. And I'm not trying to say I'm against it or whatever, but I'm just saying our hands are tied when we're when we're locked yeah. into this with mm -hmm. this contract with the union. Mm -hmm. So until that comes up again for negotiations then we'll we'll discuss, you know, the opportunities and 
and, and it's nothing personal. I'm just telling you we can't do it. That's just because we breathe that. I planned on working anyway, so. <laughs> that's, that'd be pretty hard. That, Not that's the police will pull it out. Yeah. Right? You can't. you got to be careful there, too. I know. Yeah. Okay, Jerry, we're going to go back up and explain the changes and the cost. Okay. If you will. First thing I'm going to do is hand out a bigger sheet. Okay. Okay. Little numbers, but they turn into big numbers. That's what I mean. That's right. Mr. Mayor, before we like thirty percent, Mr. Mayor, like that, Terry, right. can I get my quick report so I can fill oh, my yes. daughter's thing? Oh yeah, yes, yes. Go oh, ahead. Yeah. So I'll make it really short. Um, we did. We hung some disconnects. We ran some primary. Uh, pulled some power at the trailer that was on fire, took the bucket truck to Storm Lake because we had a hydraulic leak. Um, we worked on the siren because of the time change. Uh, we did not get it correct the first time, but apparently it went off at midnight. Um, so I we, do, we do apologize about that, but it's an older system and we got it figured out now though. Is, so why is it not very loud? The ice house point siren. The that's ice house point working. one won't work because we're still waiting. Oh, it's not working. Though. No, no, it's okay. not. That if, you, is, there's, there's a, if you go out there and set it off manually, it'll go. Correct. But it's between the communication of it. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. one we'll time we had a different video. report that that was, we had somebody come in here and ask about that. And so we had somebody check and they come back and they, one of our employees and they said, well, it is working. Well, right. Because you go push the button it's all day long and that's if, what yeah, we can it's check. It's if you go push the button. If, okay. if, if there's a communication relay issue between. So that's why I can't hardly hear it because. Correct. Yep. Okay. Yep. Correct. Right. I can tell you one right out here will make you deaf. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, dug in transformer uh, in basement, lines pulled uh, for two projects. They assisted us with um, uh, clean our backing out of storm drain uh, up by the high school. Dug in another service line, finished up some resin stuff. The street sweeper's been out quite a bit. Uh, we assisted with pulling wire, busted out concrete for the repairs on Lakewood and uh, Lake Street. We pulled the aerators from the lagoon, cleaned the aerators according to the next zone procedures. Teresa has some lovely pictures of two guys in a boat. We won't talk about those. Uh, I can show them to you. <laughs> we hung the town's Christmas lights, amp checks. We moved the bobsled from the ambulance building here down to uh, the electrical shop because we were asked to. So don't yell at me, Dave. <laughs> it's inside, Dave. It's inside, but it's not here anymore. Um, locates, we pulled the UV bulbs from the wastewater plant. According to our permit, we switched the step system over to the next step feed program according to what Nexum tells us to do. Uh, the high, this other high service pump at the water plant went kapooey. So now we're back to running only on one. Electric pump told us it was gonna be anywhere from six to 12 weeks minimum for a new motor. So I contacted another guy. He got us another motor. He was here installing it today. He took it back out, took it back to their shop in Alta cause he's gonna tweak some of the things on it. But we will be back up and running with two motors by the end of the week. It's actually cheaper than what it was with electric pump also, but it was, it was a dire straits thing. Um, it went down, it, this all pretty much happened Thursday and Friday. So I figured we had council meeting and uh, we're just gonna move forward with it. I didn't have a choice in the matter. Is he, is he bringing it back this week yet? Or? Yeah, he'll be here tomorrow morning to reinstall it and make sure everything's lined up and um, good to go. The motor that he ordered is actually an inch and a half longer we have what's called a TS motor, which is an inch and a half short shaft, and that's what the biggest holdup with all this is. There wasn't one in North America. <laughs> so he could get the other one, he could mill it down to the inch and a, take the inch and a half off and make it work. It's the exact same motor, that's the only difference between the two. 
um, and that's all. It's still cheaper than what Electro Pump was going to charge us. Uh, and then he's going to take the two junk motors and get rid of them at no charge to us. So otherwise, we got to pay the scrap guy or have the scrap guy take care of it. And I don't know how he's going to get them on his trailer because I don't want to lift them. They're heavy. Um, the brush file. Uh, moving leaves because apparently uh, it is still very difficult to put the leaves in the correct spot. I was down there yesterday and dumping some stuff and a couple was dumping leaves by the brush pile. Yep. And I said, uh, you're supposed to be dumping leaves over there. And they said, other people dump it here. I said, read the sign. They said, other people. I said, read the sign. Well, I spent three hours out there today moving the leaves. Jason and I went out there. Um, and part of the reason it was longer today than normal is our backhoe is acting up. It's throwing a fault code on it. They are supposed to be here tomorrow to look at it and fix that. So I figured if I didn't move them, people are just going to continue to pile them there. So I wanted to get them moved. It, it's just um, frustrating. Did you, say, did you tell us you're getting some different signs made? Yes. That's what yeah. I thought. Um, and then we also had somebody dump some sort of animal feed substance out there that was on fire. We had the fire department go out there and put that out for us. We also had somebody throw a cigarette butt and light some of the leaves on fire. Um, if you have been out there, we have a giant, I call it Teresa's wall of leaves that is completely away from the stuff that is burning. Um, that's the best scenario that I could give in order to not continue to feed that fire. And unless you guys can think of something other than what I did. I think it looks good what you're doing. Yeah. So now I I'm trying to figure out if there is a what we can do to try and deal with the leaf pile. Um, besides pushing it over the side. Um, I'm just trying to come up with what might be another option for us. Uh, we also had safety training, we did meter reads, picked up the barricades from the road repairs, uh, worked with residents, replacing a couple of their service lines. Uh, assisted a resident with a gas leak. Um, the PD called me. I don't know why they called me for a gas leak, but we we got it taken care of. The backhoe, like I said, has a fault code on it. Uh, they're coming to fix it tomorrow, but last week it also had two flat tires on the rear. Apparently something out at the brush pile punctured the tubes. We got those repaired. Um, There's some rebar that sticks up in certain places. So they're repaired. Uh, Resident asked me to go look at a tree, looked at it, ordered the chemicals that we need to do our daily testing at the water plant. The skid loader was actually picked up today and the loaner was taken back. However, I had to call them back because it's still throwing the same, after running it for an hour, it threw the exact same code. So uh, Haley's supposed to get back with me tomorrow and figure out what they're gonna do to fix that and not at our cost, hopefully. The resident for the tree was on 6th Street? Yes. That's that that same resident called me. Um, I haven't got back to him, but that's more of a civil issue. That's really not our issue, correct? Isn't this between the two houses? No, this one is our. Oh, it's our tree. tree. That's rubbing the house. Oh no, not not that one. I haven't heard about that one. Okay. This is just one that's split down the middle. Okay. Uh, right next, it's our tree. It's split down the middle. I had a resident call on Sixth Street call me that there's one. The neighbor's tree is coming over onto their house, rubbing on the house, and when they go to cut it, the neighbor won't let them cut it. Oh. So I just got to make sure they understand. They, it's their right. They can cut it up at that property line. And it's an older, elderly person. I'll uh, make sure I get back to them. So. Yeah, no, I didn't know anything about that one. No problem. Um, yeah, that's, that's really not our yeah, it's not issue. Our deal. It's not our deal. Explain <laughs> to them. I want to explain to them it's, it's re right. relation, so. We took the banners down on Main Street. We hung the Christmas lights, obviously. Uh, Midwest Salesman, the ITRON system that we currently use for our reeds on the electrical and the water side is starting to become obsolete. So we're going to have to do an upgrade at some particular point. There will be a gentleman here tomorrow to give us um, another presentation, our quotes on what it's going to cost to go to the next one. Um, but. Currently, Dan Sinclair is the one that gave us the one quote. It's roughly around twenty-five thousand. Uh, Jeff of Van Meter, who is who we've been working with to get our meters, because Dan Sinclair just ignored me, um, is going to give us a quote tomorrow. 
and then once we get that, uh, we'll be able to move forward. But ITRON supposedly is going away from the way we currently read within the next two years. So, so, so to make sure we get in the budget yeah, and that's process. why we're doing Correct. it for yep. the new budget. And that's year. why we're working yeah, on that. Trying to get stuff lined up to look at the budget. Um, we got some coal patch. We um, met with the salesman over some pipe. Teresa and I did. Uh, he was asking about a project that was supposed to happen a couple of years ago and just wondering where it was at. And then we had no more cold patch in order to fix any of our potholes or anything like that. So we got some more of that here. That's kind of the short. Couple questions. Um, the Manway on Lake Street and the fire hydrant, and one is SCE or SC. We're, we're still waiting on the casting to get done okay. until the casting is, it's being manufactured in uh, Sioux Falls by Newcastle. When they get it done, he's going to mobilize and have all of it done. But okay. He's Hopefully, not going to. Because I, I, I just remember I looked at some notes and it was supposed to be done like last month. It was month. supposed yeah. to be done last month yeah. and okay. I tried calling Corey today and it's not done yet. And it's it's just waiting on the manufacturer of the casting. Okay. That's the holdup. For Lake Street. Yes. And then once Lake Street's done, he will come and do the Lake Street and then he'll do the fire hydrant and then he'll do his portion of the punch list out at the wastewater plant while they're waiting uh while they're doing the roof out there and then the punch list for the wastewater plant will be completed the generator i didn't put that on there uh the new parts for the generator were installed last wednesday uh, and the generator is working out there again and the way it's supposed to perfect thank you any questions Oh, thank you. Sorry, it took long. Uh, it's all right. all right. And if you want, I can call in as I'm driving. If it's very unsure, we just clean everything. <laughs> all else fails, just call me. I'm just driving. <laughs> thank you. Sorry. Nope. Oh, thanks a lot. Good. Good report. Oh, we'll give them a little journey. Okay. Let's see if this is this trail. Have a grass and put the as built well, um, and it's kind of hard to see. But at least that. time on this uh, pay request form, uh, especially after talking to Teresa and Jason, <coughs> to make it um, a lot more understandable, you know, especially for council that hasn't been involved in the project. But as, as you probably know, we had uh, three extra work orders, three change orders as the work went along. And, uh, Added, um, <clears throat> that basically got the contract up to about two hundred thirty-four thousand dollars, and then with some additional, mainly an additional sanitary sewer, eight-inch sanitary sewer, um, plus the additional four-inch sanitary sewer service lines that we needed to hook up. Uh, hook up everybody's sewer. It ended up being the, the additional, about another additional 20000 on top of that to get us up to the $254,635. And there is... Uh, <coughs> but our sewer is all drained properly now, correct? I'm sorry. The sewer is all drained properly now, correct? Yes. It will drain properly if, if some of it's on minimum grade or a little bit less than minimum grade. But um, it's better than what it was. It had a big right. That's tell what. Yeah. And there is um, a, an adjustment we should make tonight because I do have 
seating in there. I anticipated they were going to, this meeting was going to be far enough in the future that we'd be able to get the seating done, but it hasn't been cold enough. The, uh, the seating that we would do now would be dormant seating, and we'd have to make sure that it doesn't germinate. So the soil, te soil temperature has to be like under 50 degrees. So we got it. Normally, we would have had enough uh, days under 45 degrees by now to dormant seed. Usually, it's near Thanksgiving when you get to that point. It's just been a little warmer this year, so um, there is about $1,254 that should come off for this payment. I'll show that to you, Tracy. Okay. Because they didn't, they didn't actually do uh, items 22 and 23 in the base bin. Oh, okay. The seeding and fertilizing. And mulching. And, okay. <clears throat> so I'm subtracting mm -hmm. 1320. That would be part of their, because it. Seeding and fertilizing. So this would be, then you you took off for a retainage or whatever. Right. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's just a standard adjustment that we, we can make because that work wasn't done. But everything else, uh, we should tell the, the status of actually where we're at is besides the seating, um, I haven't gone through and drawn up a punch list for the contractor and I wanted to ask any of council or Mayor, Teresa, Jason, I know he's not here, if there's anything that popped up that you saw that should go on a punch list. Go ahead. One cut or two cuts. Drove down the street. Looks awesome. Love the grade. Slopes to the center. I love the way they matched up all the driveways and approaches. Where's our six inch curb? We got it on the east end. Is it, is Towards the north end. North end. Yeah, or, the I'm north sorry. end. That's, 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 north. that's what, yeah, that's what we ended Northeast. up. I didn't know it was yeah, we got a credit for not putting that in. <clears throat> why, right. why is there not a six-inch curb over there? The, the discussion and Jason, if, you know, Jason was here and we had to, we went down there the one day and the discussion was to take that six-inch curb, not include it because of um, how we would plow snow and different things down uh, there <clears throat> and that it would not... We. And Teresa, I know you weren't here and Jason wasn't here, but when we discussed this project, how long ago, a year ago? Back, back in December of 22. Uh, the six inch curve was important to be in there because of traffic and people parking on that grass just pulling off to the side. And in the meeting, you even quoted, you know, the curve's going to be higher now because I asked the question about the dirt flow away. So I heard there was a one inch curve that was taken out but not a six inch curve in the original plan there's a six inch curve see and that's what i was yeah. understanding was the one inch curve was no. the one inch curve and we didn't think that that would be yeah, the one inch curve i agree but there right. was a six inch curve unless the yeah. plans had changed after our meeting that we voted to do a bit bid um begin six inch curve and it goes all the way around to the street where a lot of times a curb, the main reason for a curb is in a gutter where it, the water can flow up against it and you can carry about six But that wasn't water. our purpose of the curb and we talked about it. It was the purpose of our curb is to keep people from not driving on the grass and parking on the grass. And we <coughs> talked about it at the meetings and it's in the yeah, drawings. I about it. And it's in our drawings. We got a credit for him not putting it on. A one inch curb, not a six inch curb. Big difference. What would it cost us to put a six inch curb all the way along there now? I'm asking the question because that's what was in the original plans and it wasn't put in. And I remember there asking you if you're going to have somebody on site inspecting everything to make sure because we had issues yeah. with a different deal and you said yes we're going to be there but there was no six inch curb. It's safe right here. Well, it's safe we right here because six inch curb. Off, we, we agreed with him that we'd have to have a bunch of more fail brought in. Well, we you talked about that. that side <laughs> built up either to the top of the curb because we wanted to drop off so that people wouldn't be driving over this thing to 
too empty parking along there. He was, he was trying to use it as traffic control. I've never put a curb in and not backed over the back of it. Well, in the meeting on December 5th, you even talked about we'll get, you're going to have to haul in more backfill to build up that curb, and it's going to be a higher curb than what was there today, back on last year, before this. My question is, in our plans that we voted on and approved, there's a six-inch curb. In our finished product, there's no six-inch curb. And if we had to put one in there today, because I think that there's one person up here for sure that can tell you that people are going to drive and park on our grass now because parking is such an issue down there, and we discussed that at that meeting. Now we have that issue. If we want to put a six-inch curb in there again, what would it cost us? It'd be significant. Uh, I had Jason and Teresa come out because we were having the discussion and we all agreed that it would probably be a good idea to leave it off. But I was only under the impression that it was just a one inch curve, not a six inch curve. Because I had the same concerns about, you know, not, not with the concerts and everything about people, you know, using that as a now parking lot and I was trying to think of ways I could do some yeah. landscaping or something that would avoid people <coughs> coming down that way because, I mean, a one-inch curb wasn't going to stop anybody anyway. Six-inch curb now, that could have stopped some people, um, you know, so. Well, the contractor pointed out to me how it was just not going to look very good. And it's been but there's but, but looks and a purpose are two different things, and we have a purpose for that curb in that part of in that particular street, and it was something we discussed. I probably should have brought it to the council. Can't deny that. But now what do we do? Because we're going to have an issue. So now, what's it cost us to put a six-inch curb along there? You said significant. I'd have to get it from the contractor. Yeah. But you see what I'm saying, Terry? And I'm not yes. picking on you. I'm just saying, I have a copy of the original plans that we voted on. I dug them out because I've seen the notes that Teresa gave on a one-inch curb, and I dug it out. And then I went back and did the research and looked up the council meetings because I know we discussed it, and I want to make sure I have my facts straight. We discussed that, and your comment to me was even, we're going to bring in some more dirt to fill in because the curb's going to be higher than what's there today. Yes. I remember that. And then, I'm not going to deny that. And, and now the curb is non-existent, and what Teresa and Jason and you discussed was a one-inch curb, from the way I understand it, which would have been way smaller. So I even brought it up with a one-inch curb. I don't remember talking about a one-inch curb. To be honest with you, I just uh, I know we had six inch on the plants, and it was going to require a lot more fill <coughs> on the back side. I didn't. I don't remember talking about leaving it six inches low on the back side. Um, I don't have a real good answer for you. So, as me and us council members sitting here, you want us to make a payment on a project that's not completed as we would bid it. Well, you're only paying him for what he did. He didn't do what was in the bid. What do you want me to do? Well, want I'm asking what, what, well, Terry, it, it, I can talk. you guys correct me if I'm wrong and, or tell me no. That curb is very significant on that part, and we talked about it, and the reasoning being, we don't want people driving on it. And somebody says, well, we can put up a decorative fence, or you can put up some... People are, the decorative fence is going to cause issues with snow removal because the snow plow goes along there and they can push it over that <coughs> six inch curve. We wanted that curve so we're not having people drive over there. We, we're going to have an issue on there because parking is so tight. That curve is not there and we bid that. It was in our plans and now it's not there. This, this is the troubling part for me since I've been on this council and before I was on the council, we hire an engineering firm not just you, there's other ones, that come in here, we bid a job, we see the specs, and then when they go to do the job, it's not done as it was bid. Well, we didn't think it was right, like your answer, well, it wasn't going to look good. That's not why we bid it. We bid it for having to be done that way. And you're right, I, I, I'm not pointing at you, but I am pointing at you, I guess, Terry. 
it's probably a significant change in this scope of work that should have been brought to the council. I think Ten Point did an absolute fantastic job all the way down to the south, you know, matching up them driveways, that poured wall from that one guy. So I think they did a fantastic job. I drove through there a couple times, looked at it. I love, uh, it's got a nice flow to it, it's going to drain right. We had the three change orders on making the stuff done like we needed done, that we thought would be doing the project right, and yet we don't have a curve. <clears throat> Does anybody disagree with me? I'm, I'm asking no. because I don't want to keep speaking if you guys are on the other no. page. Yeah, and, I, and, and I, can, I can say, Jason and I, I guess, you know, I had concerns about people, you know, parking along there without a curb, I, you know, but I guess I was under the understanding that the curb wasn't going to be significant enough to matter, and Jason made the comment that it was going to be a lot easier to plow the snow for the winter time without the curb, so... I guess, and they agreed to, to flip-flop concrete for, you know, a, a, you no, know, no, a, no. a patch repair, a patch repair job for, for part of it. So. But then that all should have been brought back to the council again before. Thank you. Right, and I, 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 and I would have to, and I would have to apologize because we did it on the fly one day and we should have, we've been bringing stuff back to you, so I guess I, I can say that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm ultimately at fault there, so, you know. I'm just trying to fix a problem that I know we're going to have before we have the problem, before we sign off on this, because once we sign off, there ain't no going back. So we've got two issues. We need to pay for what work we got done, then we have to come around and authorize it. We can't pay for the work course. we got done because it's not completed as it was in our bid. We took money off because we did do the curve, right? We got a credit. We got a credit back. So how much? Okay, okay, so how much was that credit back? Yeah. Was it a significant it, amount? Yeah, they poured uh, 15 square yards around the uh, water valve that was broke on the intersection of Lake Shore. Yeah, that was the the street just the, the, the patch that they did to the west of Lake Shore. What's that called? Lake Street. Lake Street. Lake Street. On the south end. Lake Shore. Why Randy Dross Hole? There's 15 yards of concrete there that was poured around that valve that was fixed. And so that was an $1,895 change. I'm looking at the, at the sheet that we got handed out. Under item four, there's a change, quantity change, 18.10, dollars $18 and 98 cents. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, yep. Very good. Number four. 18 yards, $1,895. That was the change. Contract on today. Pretty sure that's not it. The note I'm talking about is down here in the comments. It talks about that they were willing to pour that 15 yards around that valve box that's in exchange for not pouring the curve. I did a calculation it's about the same amount of concrete. So what, I'll, what I can do is go back to them and ask them to bring a price back to council. Well, bring price back to the council for pouring 15 yards of flat work or pouring however many feet of curb work? For putting that curb on. I don't think the council should have to pay for it. I'm going to tell you that right now. Our original packet that we okayed for the bid and the bid that we accepted had that in there. It also had in there the more fill, because you even talked about it, Terry, bringing in more fill. If you want, we can pull up the video December of the 5th, council 5th, meeting. December 5th. That's what we talked about. It. I remember talking about it. But I remember talking on the job site with Jason and Teresa and Mike Friend. I wasn't and there. All, I know you weren't. Right. But we all thought that there was Quite a few reasons for leaving. Do you want me to get Jason on the phone and I'm see sorry. It, it doesn't matter. I, I'm sorry that I forgot our discussion where it, 
you say it was emphasized why the curb needed to stay on there. I don't, I don't Actually, remember. I think the mayor brought that up. That is emphasized because we don't want people parking on that grass. Well, I don't know that, I don't people park there anyway, do they? Not, they didn't, but they will yeah. now. If you drive down through there, they'll be easily be able to pull off the side. If the curb was there, going down the hill, I've never had been, I've never seen anybody park there. Because there was a curb there. There was always a curb there. There's no curb there now. Like I said, the street looks great. Love the work they did. Can't emphasize that enough. I think they did a fantastic job meeting up all the uneven stuff down there. That curb is not there, and there's the parking issues already in that area, and this is going to add to it. That's all I'm saying. And I, we bid it, so it was in there. A six-inch curb was in there. I guarantee you, if I'm a contractor and I can pour 15 yards of flat work around the storm drain compared to putting in however many feet of curb, what I would choose to, and not bring any more backfill in. And you didn't have to form the curb. Correct. And that's not what they did. And if, if, if you curb. come in and, and put a curb on there now, how are you going to structurally make it to the street? If you're, it you know, so it's not, not, huh? They would have to use rebar. Well, then, and, you know, the curb would naturally, you know, pour the street, it would have been part of the street with rebar. I mean, you aren't going to. I'm, I'm really curious as to what the significant amount is to have it fixed. I, I mean, I, I, you know, I understand completely what Dale was saying. It was good with the six inch curb on there. You know, knowing these guys, they'd probably rather dig it out and form another piece of right. Those yeah, instead of, right. instead of putting in, trying to instead of strapping it on yeah, the top, you you take and dig out another section and you basically <clears> form up the curb on. and you yeah, gotta, put it in there like you would a gutter. Be about a one foot wide right. piece of concrete that would come up to the curb. I, I, I really, I'm sorry. I, I, I want the council to know. I'm, I'm sorry that we didn't bring it back to you. I, uh, and I'm, well, and, I'm not trying and I to. Didn't, I asked the question that day, and I <coughs> guess I should have asked more questions, is because I said, where, you know, how are we going to keep people from parking on the grass, especially like during yeah. concert series and everything else? Because then I was trying to come up with other ways, you know, either plant yeah. little bushes or something along there to try and keep. You know, so, a right. more decorative we, landscaping we, type of a thing. We talked about that. But you were aware at the time it was being done that we did. You did quote a six-inch yeah. curb there. Yeah. I know. And then I you know discussed the, the other. You know, and if the bid was accepted and done on a six-inch curb, that's what should have been delivered to us. We're talking. Or well, brought back. We're talking well over 150 feet if I'm looking at the oh, plans. More, more than that. Of curb. Sounds like you got some more work to do. Yeah. Yep. Not the first time. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And I'm, I'm sorry, sorry Carrie, I'm not drilling you. I, but I'm I, sorry too. I, I'm I really am. I, I didn't foresee anything like this coming up tonight. I, I, um, I'm just kind of surprised. I, I thought we had posted out enough on the on the job to we had enough reasons. Well, I got, a, I got a question for you because these plans that are presented to us in tonight's packet that you have a copy of there, you know, we have the swarm. I don't see the curb in that plan. So why did the plans change? Or maybe they didn't. I don't well, know that. Well, he, he probably did it as, he probably changed the plans as it was built because now as built, it doesn't have a curb in it. Okay. Oh, that, yeah. It's an as built. Not as bid, Bill. This is not as bid. I'm asking the question because I'm trying to learn why them are different than what we bid on. Right. And that's what Patrice and you both answered as built plans that right. we have. So I can make sure we look in the future on what to compare the plans. Very important to save our stuff. I'm More sure Ben, I'm sure Pop and Mike and we'll. Bring back a, a proposal for 
I know he likes working here too. Yeah. We like I tell you, if you're talking Mike from Ten Point, yes, I'm telling you, I think they did a fantastic job matching that up. I really do. Very impressed with how well they matched that up, and I think they did a good job. And I think the communication was good with the issues that we had come up. Teresa and Jason got a hold of us, council members. Hey, this come up. We need to fix it now. We, yep, let's do it. You know, they the chambers. Very, very good. Uh, comparing her with the other city managers and people I work with, they, they were on top of everything. Yeah. I think they did a fantastic job communicating, at least to me, and I'm assuming they did it to the rest of the council as well. And uh, you know, my big philosophy is we're going to do it. Let's fix it right instead of band-aiding it. And if we didn't, wouldn't have fixed that stuff underneath there, we'd been band-aiding it. Well, the sewer would have been a problem. Correct. And you know, I'm, I'm speaking of our old city administrator and our superintendent. They said they cameraed that. They said what? They said they had cameraed that on that December 5th meeting. They said they cameraed the sewer and everything looked good. Well, that's what I understand. I, I was told the sewer was all right. We just had to replace the manhole. Yeah. But I, I yeah, and, this, and this was a difficult project for, oh, that, for this group. Difficult. I mean, they ran into a lot of things that we had not, you know, envisioned or planned on. So, yeah. I mean, at the end of the, you know, at the end of the day, that was, you know, one of those. Um, you know, I I can say, you know, and I'll. Put the the blame on me on the curb i guess i didn't you know realize that you know i did ask that question today how are we going to keep people from from parking there um but my understanding was that curb wasn't significant enough that we felt that it was i guess that and maybe i misunderstood the conversation that it was significant enough to to make a big difference so then it was like for snow plows and various reasons, you know. We have, that, we have, we have, so, and, and I, I apologize for that, that I didn't ask. Teresa, it's really not your fault because but, you weren't in the conversations in the pre bidding meeting, the pre planning meeting, the discussions. Well, right, but right. we were in charge of the project. Yeah, so, and, you know, at the end of the day. Right, but I, again, they did a fantastic job with everything except there's no curb. How's that for an answer, Terry? Because I do think they did a fantastic job. I do. I really do. You'll be in touch? I sure will. Okay. Yeah. Right. Thank, Thank you. Do you have anything else? Otherwise, we'll have a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Second. Second. Leave it adjourned. Um, on this November 30th, do you know the time on this MLA? Um, I think there are a couple different. Yeah, and I email, or I guess I can forward it. I can forward the registration link. I would assume that there should be some time frames of what that first one is. I can 